faith, family, and freedom. That's what we're all about. You know, the Family Research Council has stood for those values since uh, its inception almost 40 years ago. In fact, next year we'll be celebrating 40 years. And those values are resonating now more than ever with America. It's a new study of almost 4,000 voters titled America's Values and Their Implications for Democracy. Now, day to day in our society, it's easy to see the, the sin and the godlessness all around us. But as Christians, we know that people are desperate and they're crying out for something more. And for most people, that begins with the family. And what encourages me about what we're about to talk about is that people want to go back to what works. And that's what we represent here. Joining me now to uh, discuss this is the man behind the research, our good friend, George Barna. He's a senior research fellow here at the Family Research Council in our Center for Biblical Worldview. George, welcome back to the program. Good to see you, Tony. Thanks for having me. All right. Before we dive in uh, to uh, some of the, the specifics of this research and what you found, tell us about your thinking behind this study and uh, why you found it necessary to embark upon it now. Well, we're trying to understand what's going to go on in the election cycle. We keep hearing about this big red wave. I'm not convinced that there is one. And so we wanted to have an understanding of on what basis are people going to make their voting choices. And the more we've looked at, the more we've come to understand that there's a shift that's taking place there. And that transition is away from simply thinking about issues and perhaps candidate background and personality to digging a little bit deeper and really going back to their core values. So we wanted to understand what are the core values of Americans today? You know, I've looked at values in American society over the course of American history from the colonial era up to today. And obviously there have been huge changes, but with what's going on, particularly in the last two or three years with uh, the, the behavior of the government, the alleged pandemic, all of these kinds of things, that have happened, it's changed the way that people are making some of their decisions. So we really wanted to understand on what basis do they make it, and that brought us to the place of we need to understand the values that drive the thinking of Americans. All right, so let's talk about some of those values. Um, and, and I wanna pull one of the numbers from your uh, survey. 72% say they support traditional moral values. That's a pretty high number. It's a huge number, and for those of us in our camp, it's an encouraging number. Now, on the one hand, we did not define for them what, for instance, you and I might mean by traditional moral values. On the other hand, as people told us, yes, I support traditional moral values, and then we asked them, well, what values are most important to you? That, in essence, was their defining what those kind of values mean to them. And so I think we get a pretty good understanding that while they're not perfectly aligned with what we might find in the scriptures or what the conservative Christian base of America might say, well, here's the list of those, there is a lot of overlap. And to me, that's encouraging. So what is inform? Did you get into kind of what was informing those values? What was formulating those values for those that you talked to? There are a number of different things, I think, that are influencing that. One of those is their anger about what's going on in America today. You know, we discovered that 73% uh, of Americans, three out of every four, say that they are personally angry about the condition of the United States today. Uh, we found that six out of 10 of them believe that if we don't change the direction that the country is moving in, Five years from now, the country is going to be in even worse shape than it's in today. And they're already angry about that shape. And we found well, that, that, that tells me that that tells me I'm not alone uh, because I'm I'm angry about the direction of this country. And I'm concerned about what the future holds if we don't change directions. Yeah. And, you know, one of the other things that emerged, Tony, is that as we looked at this, we found that parents in particular are concerned because they're thinking about their children and what their children are going to experience in, in the years and decades to come. And when we talked about the values that they embrace, 
we gave them a five point scale, a Likert scale, where we describe what each point on the scale means. And, you know, we talked about things like which values are you willing to die to protect? Which values are you willing to give up precious resources to preserve? And it's when you put those two particular responses together, which means that these people are willing to sacrifice a part of their life, if not their life, to ensure that in particular their children and future generations and America itself will be a place that they would want to live in. And then they define those kinds of values. So, so to us, it was an eye-opening study. So what were some of those ideas and principles people were willing to die for? I mean, was like the Green New Deal? Uh, was it collectivism? Were those the type of things they were willing to die for? Yeah, Green New Deal would not have been something that we looked at because that's a policy as opposed to a value. But when we looked at the values that they were espousing to us, family, far and away, number one on the list. And one of the most fascinating things about that is that we have 366 different subgroups in this body of data. It's a huge body of data. So we can slice and dice it in all kinds of ways. And as we did that, what we discovered is that it doesn't matter what group you're looking at, whether you're looking at uh, conservatives, moderates, liberals, Republicans, Democrats, men, women, uh, white, black, Asian, uh, Hispanic, young, old, doesn't matter where you go. Family is number one on the list across the board. So the important thing I think for us to understand about that, and there were a number of other things that we saw related to their views about the importance of family, is that today, the lens that more and more Americans are using to understand the world and to respond to it is their family which is important for the election and, and particularly important for candidates to understand and public officials to understand. Because what this means is that when we talk about an issue, say immigration, say taxation, I mean, pick your issue, it doesn't matter, healthcare costs, people are gonna look at that issue through the lens of how does it affect my family? What does it do to the future of my children? How does it enable us as a family to continue to grow as individuals and grow together as a family pursuing the goals and objectives that we've set for ourselves as a unit? So that, that was, I think, one of the most significant things to come out of the research. We also saw that values like happiness, that was second on the list. And then you had about two thirds of Americans who said that they'd be willing to die for or to give up precious limited resources to protect uh, things such as their personal freedom and independence, such as justice, kindness, character, uh, trustworthiness, integrity, personal responsibility, uh, property ownership, you know, kind of a slap in the face to the Marxists. So right. you've, you've got all these kind of values that people are saying, this is what America really is. And remember, this is a group where two out of three of them, again, on a longer scale, they're saying they're either extremely or very proud to be Americans. And when we asked them, how do you think of yourselves? Tops on the list was, I think of myself as an American citizen. And secondly, was I think of myself as a family person. This is the mindset that they're taking into life every day. And so we've got to recognize that these values are meant to feed into being a good citizen and being a good parent, good spouse, good child. You know, George, I, I find this amazing given the fact of the messaging that we've seen from the media, from Hollywood, that really runs counter to all of these values. So where is this coming from? Well, the, the values are coming from what people now have had two years to sit back while they've been at home. They've been in lockdown. They've been orchestrating their way through all the chaos and turbulence that's been handed to us by the government. And, and so now they're saying, look, I've, I've had time to reflect on what really matters to me. I've had time to think about what am I really willing to put myself on the line for? And this is what they've come up with. Remember, we're also in the context of a nation that no longer believes they can trust any institution other than the family. And so they're saying, you know what, I get my information from the news media, but I know I can't trust them. The laws are dictated to me by the government, but I know I can't trust them. And so they're looking at all that and they're saying, okay, 
if I want the freedom to have this kind of responsibility to make my own choices in life, I've got to be willing to give up some things to maintain that freedom. And so to me, it's, it's really heartening to see that Americans are maybe now growing a backbone and yeah. saying, okay, now is the time to let the government know, no, you cannot do this to me. It's not right. That's not America. So could it also, George, be, as you said, you know, they've had a couple of years through the whole coronavirus and all the government overreach that pretty much everything has been shaken. I mean, look at the economy, uh, look at inflation, look at all of these. Everything we've kind of put our trust in has been shaken. And so is it that we're going down now to the foundation and that's where these values are coming from? Yeah, absolutely. Because when we then talk with them about well, what kind of messages would you resonate with coming from politicians, people you know you can't trust. And there, there were certain things that they said uh, about the politicians themselves. It's like, well, you know, I can no longer take them at face value. Party identification doesn't mean that much to me. They're going to have to prove to me that they're people of character and that the kind of country that they want to build is the kind of country I want to be part of. So they're looking for things like stability and security and uh, national strength. They're looking for people in public office who are going to demonstrate common sense. But they're also saying at the same time that I'm going to expect more of our public leaders, I'm going to expect more of myself and my friends and neighbors and family. And what they were telling us there is, you know what, we've got to recalibrate how we yeah. live. And, I mean, and they, so the cuts, yep, good. It almost sounds like the seeds of revival, uh, going back to what we know to be true from the past. I mean, it could, this could be something much bigger. It could be. It'd be a backdoor revival where this is not being led by churches. No, I understand look, that. I understand. But these values emanate from who God created us to be. And, you know, each revival kind of comes from a different source. But I mean, this is, I mean, we're going back to foundational things. This, if the faith component works its way into this, this could be explosive. Absolutely. And as Romans 2 tells us, you know, I mean, God has written these things in our heart. So, yes. I mean, we know what's right. We know what's wrong. And I think Americans now who tend not to be a reflective people, we tend to be a reactive people. We're people of achievement, not people of philosophy. And that's what made America great was the fact that people were willing to work hard. They were willing to take their ideas and pursue them. And they really wanted to show results for that, that hard work. We believe in that as a nation. But as a result of that, we had to give up something to do that. And it was the ability to sit down and think carefully, clearly, yeah. and deeply about who we are and what we stand for. And so now we've had that opportunity to do that. And I think we, we've come back around to many of the kinds of values that the Bible says, this is what's gonna make your life healthy. This is what will enable you to thrive. Well, George, I wanna thank you for joining us. We're out of time. I, I, you know what, I need to set aside a whole hour to talk with you. I, I just find this stuff fascinating. I appreciate so much the work that you do. This is good stuff. Thanks for being with us on this Friday. Thank you, Tony.